Welcome to the Introduction to Subversion Guide, specifically tailored for Mechatronics students. Uh, for those of you who are just getting started, I'm on the Mechatronics Other Material page. Here are a variety of useful links for related to other material that may be helpful for you. And in particular, one thing that you should always refer back to is this How to Get Around Projects Guide, which I have open in this other window. We try to update it often with information that's of interest to Mechatronics students and people in general working on Mechatronics software electronics projects. In particular, you will probably be working with Subversion and LaTeX, and we try to answer questions that come up often in this document. Now that you have the guide open, another area that you will want to visit to get a feel for getting more information and getting more help, it will also teach you a little bit about how to work with this material, is the Projects for Mechatronics. And you'll notice it has the URL, projects.cs.us, projects, T441 Mech216. If you are a different project class or a different year, you'll want to change elements of this URL. And the most interest is this link called Repository. This takes you into a view of the Subversion Repository. But unfortunately, only can view files here. When you want to actually put files into it, you need to install what's known as a Subversion Client, which is what we're about to do now. If you are on Windows, you'll be installing a client called Tortoise SVN. Here's where you can download it. If you're on a 64-bit system, you'll want to install the 64-bit operating system version. If not, 32-bit. Most of you are running modern versions of Windows, so you probably want to install the 64-bit. And now we get a little screen to make us appreciate that they do this for free. And here's the client. Once it's finished being checked by the virus checker, it'll be ready for us to click and install. We say next. Next. The defaults are good, except for there's one important trick that I now am pointing out to students. There's this command line client tools. You want to install this. If you install this, when you use other clients later on, they'll be able to access a version directly from the command line, which is useful for tools like uh, Tech Studio. Then you can just push one button to check in the document you're working directly into Subversion without having to leave the program. We say next. Install. If you're on Windows 10, it will ask if it's okay to and make changes to your device. You say yes. It'll ask if we can close Windows Explorer. We'll just deal with it after a reboot, so do not close applications. It's up to you how you want to do this. And now we finish, and now I have to make a reboot. So I'll be right back after I reboot my computer. Hi there. Welcome back to our introduction to getting software set up, in particular Subversion for working with Mechatronics 1. So this is applicable to other systems. I've just finished rebooting, and now I wanted to focus your attention on where you can get help on topics like this. If you're in the Mechatronics class, then you have access to the Mechatronics 1 2016 projects page. And inside there is a wiki, which you can find at this tab. Inside there, we've put information about where our Subversion repository is. If you click on that, it'll take you to a view inside the repository after I log in. And that's another way to look at the same files without having to install any software. Again, this it can only be done as a read-only view, so you can't actually upload any files, but if you need to grab a file quickly or share it with someone else, you just need the URL, send it to them, and they can download the file. But what we really want for this URL for is this is how we set up the Subversion client in order to be able to install, uh, to set it up so we can work. If you forget these things, there's a nice Mechatronics page that I've created which tells you more of these things and has useful information for anyone involving with mechatronics. The most relevant page for most of you is this software page. Here we put some quick details including the guide that I told you about a few moments ago and some information about other possibilities of how to set up subversion clients because we will be mostly focusing on Windows because most of the students are running Windows but there are also clients for other operating systems. Down here for other videos I'm going to be showing you there are latex installation. For the beginning of the course you'll probably be using Overleaf so you don't need to install the software yet but later on you can watch one of my later videos to see how you will set up LaTeX which you'll need in order to work on documents locally. Now that we know how to get help now let's get to work. Go back to the original page. It says what the Subversion Repository is and select it. Copy this with Control-C or right-click and say Copy. 
And now we're going to close this window to get it out of the way. Whoops. And we're going to right click on our desktop and pick SVN Checkout. That's how we get started. We only need to do this once. If you've copied the URL, it already fills it in for you. And you'll notice it says repository, SVN, and the name of the course that we're working with. We say OK. And it probably won't ask you for a username and password. It might. If it does, make sure you click on the Save My Username and Password, or you'll have to type in the password every time. As you can see, it's downloading a bunch of files. Let's look at the directory structure, get a feel of what's there. Double click on my folder. And inside here, you'll see f six top level folders. There's the admin. Inside this working copy, there are a bunch of interesting files that are worth taking a look at. Let's start at the top. Inside the administration folder is the files that I store for year-to-year -year relevant information. In particular, we have the feedback from last year, which you can take a look and see if we've tried to address it, as we've tried to as best we can. Then, there are the lab groups for Lab 1 and Lab 2, which were automatically generated by the two scripts that you see here, make all groups and make groups, which is a Python script. Down here is a label file which contains all the relevant information for making labels for boxes and for other elements that are going to be used in the class. Next, we have a folder called common, which is filled with a whole bunch of stuff that is used every year. So this includes some administrative information itself, including overviews of the course, uh, time plan, there's an agenda that gets updated regularly as we change what's going to go on in the course, and then there's some overview files, which is the document we handed out on the first day of class. There's some forms, which you'll be told to use when necessary. They're all in LaTeX for cleanup forms, indicating that you've finished cleaning up and doing what you need to in the class. There's also a feedback form, which we use for getting back your feedback about what you think went well in the course and what needs improvement. Then we have the guides. When you're looking for how things should be graded or how things should be applied, this is full of lots of information, including the grading sheets used in many of the assignments. You'll need to use LaTeX to compile them, but this includes all the information you need to know, including previous years, of how to write a report or how to finish an assignment correctly. Here are the labs, which are still a work in progress, and they will be used in your classes. In many cases, we've rendered a PDF and put them into my school already for you. Lectures, this is where some of the more standard lecture formats have gone. These are done in a LaTeX format called Beamer, and I've put the source files here so you can see how I've created a presentation, and you can use it to base your own presentations upon. There's various resources, depending on what topic you're interested in. Altium, Arduinos, the old lab kit we had. Uh, I don't know what SICK is. Ah, the old red boards, which are the the red board that we're using, which is the SparkFun Inventors Kit, SIK, and then the Wixel, which is the microcontroller that includes a RF stage, so you can use it for communication. Next, there's the RU Thesis template, which I am the maintainer of, and this is the template you're going to be using to write your final report in the course. This happens to also be the final report, uh, the thesis template for the bachelor's, master's, and PhD as well. So using this as your final report is a great way to get practice in something you'll need to do later if you write a bachelor's, master's, or PhD dissertation. Template. This contains all the templates you use for the course, including how to make your to write a paper for a journal or a conference, how to make labels to go on top of your notebook or on your boxes, how to do an online notebook. This includes a LaTeX template that you can put your notes into once you copy them into your folder, how to make presentations, including the presentations you'll need in the course. There's a final presentation template that is not required but highly suggested that you use. And as I said before, uh, in a previous uh, presentation, this is where all the report templates are used for writing lab reports and proposals and other useful documents that you'll be doing as part of the course. Here's a way to make signs. And here's another link to that same thesis template. I should probably remove the other one. Here are the old templates if you want to see how we did things previously. and. In particular, if you want to learn more about how to do more interesting math, there's a nice cheat sheet for working with it. 
and the XMAC Design Directory, there's a bunch of resources for learning how to do XMAC Design better. One of my favorite papers is in here is the Thompson Errors in AD, which I highly recommend you read. Group, this is where you will be making your groups for doing the various assignments that need to be done as groups instead of as labs or as final projects. In many cases, you'll be naming them with your RU username so that we can grade them appropriately. There's a reference folder that contains reference files for whatever projects that are being done this year. In 2016, the project is a collaborative project with a university in Sweden to build a liquid-fueled rocket to go up to high altitudes. So this is all the information that we have for contact with the uh, school in Stockholm. Submit is the place that you'll be putting submitting your documents in addition to my school. This is a place for us to keep track of if something goes wrong, if there are any questions about how a document was done. You can see in lab one. We for lab one, these are structured as partners and you put both names in them. User, this is a place for you to put your individual files that you're working on before you're going to go publish them in the submit folder or in the lab folder. This is where when I'm showing examples in class, I store them in the Foley folder so you can see how they look. So in particular, the example I gave during class was how to work with a notebook, and you can see all my files are here. The notebooks that you do in class, if you choose to do an electronic notebook, should probably live here according to the submission instructions. We need to be able to find them easily, and this is the easiest place to find them. That's it for the files that we have here. Uh, in the next video, we'll show you how to work with Subversion in a way that is uh, in, in the simplest sense, so you can understand how to add files, how to commit them, how to remove them, rename them, etc. Now that we've got Subversion installed, we're going to demonstrate how to get started. We're going to do this by demonstrating how to get your notebook in the course set up. To make life easier, we're going to open things in two windows, and we're going to go to where the notebook template is. It's under Common, Template, Notebook. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into User and create myself a place for my notebook to live. So I'm going to say New Folder, call it my username, Foley. And the next thing I'm going to do is tell Subversion to pay attention to this folder. I do this by right-clicking and saying Torres SVN Add. Torus SVN Add says, pay attention to the stuff in this folder and tell me if any of it's changed, added, subtracted, etc. So I say OK. Now I go into Foley, and the next thing I do is I go grab everything in Notebook, and I right drag. This means right click and hold and drag it into the other window. And now you'll notice that a bunch of new options that didn't exist before suddenly have appeared. This is called the Context Menu. What I want to do is to SVN Copy and add files to this working copy. Working copy is the copy that I have make that I made by doing a checkout from Subversion. And when I do so, it creates a bunch of files here and adds them. Strangely enough, it does not add the graphics, so we have to go into the graphics folder and add them. So Torus SVN, add. And now I've got all the files I need to get started. And the next thing I need to do to send this to the server and get get my files into the system is to right click and say Torus SVN commit. And now I have all this information. I want to write what I did, which is to created, copied the notebook template to get started with my notes. And if you notice, I'm writing a comment that says what I did and why. These are very important in comments because we can search the comments. We can search by time, we can search by author, we can search by keyword in the comments, and this allows us to walk forward and backwards in time and find when specific events occurred. So I'm happy, so I hit OK. And now my files are on the server, and you'll notice that the blue plus turned into a green check mark. I go inside, and let's say that I don't like the name of a file. For instance, lab notes is very generic. I want to rename this to something more appropriate for me. The way I do it is I right click, and again, I go to Taurus SVN, and if I look here, there are a bunch of really useful options. The one that I care about right now is this one says rename. I'll rename this to Foley Notebook. And now it asks me if I want to rename everything else. Yes, actually I do. Well, actually, I don't want the labnotes.sty to be renamed, so I say no. 
But I do want the labnotes.bib to be renamed to match my thing. So I say torsusvn, rename, poly notebook. I say no again. And now I send it to the server by right clicking and saying SVN commit. Renamed the notebook to be more my style. Now let's say that there's a file here that I don't need, like the logo. Let's take a look what it looks like. Your university logo. If I wanted this file to go away, I would right click on it and say Taurus SVN delete. I'm not going to do that right now because I don't actually want to delete that file. But this is how I would get rid of a file if I don't want it anymore. Once I've chosen delete, I still have to do the commit stage in order to send it to the server so that other people looking at my folder will have that file magically disappear. But let's say something went very wrong and I accidentally deleted all the files in my folder, but I committed recently. Normally, in most cases, this would be a moment to panic, but the, thankfully, since we're using Subversion, this is extremely easy to fix. We just right-click, and we use a command called revert. Revert says undo everything back to the last time I talked to the server. So in this case, I would like to get all my files back, so I select them all, and I say OK. And now when I hit OK, all my files are back. I will have lost any changes I didn't commit to the server, but at least I don't need to panic, and as long as I've been checking in regularly, everything is fine. This ends the very fast tutorial to Subversion. Uh, hopefully you found it interesting. We'll be updating this as we learn for other, other things that students have trouble with. Thank you very much.